Hello everyone, back at it again. It's about ah, two weeks or so after ice out. Water's still pretty cold. And I'm looking for a sure thing. So I decided I'd go after panfish. And I don't have much time to do it. The sun's gonna be uh, setting pretty soon. And once it gets behind the trees, it's gonna get cold. And this isn't the first pond I tried. The first pond I tried to, uh, to get at, uh, the water was still too low and I'd have to go through about a hundred yards of mud to get to the water and yeah, it just wasn't gonna happen. I, I was not prepared for that kind of mud and carrying the boat and yeah, it just, even if I could do it, it wouldn't have been pretty and uh, I'd be a mess by the time I got to the water. So this is plan B, and the forecast was for light winds, or no wind, and we've got a little bit more wind than that. We've got southeast winds, probably 5 to 10. I know it doesn't look like this on this part of the pond, but towards the left corner of the screen you can see the wind uh, coming across the pond. I'm just trying to duck out of it in this little cove here. And my first idea was to uh, fish the wind line. That's a pattern that a lot of people might overlook, uh, but it works really well for trout. There's no trout in this pond, um, but it also works for panfish. And what happens is uh, bugs that are hatching in the spring will accumulate along that wind line and the fish will pick them off. And you'll, if you pay attention, they're a little hard to see rising in, in the wind line. Uh, but if you pay attention really closely, you can, you can spot them. And if you can present something that looks kind of buggy in that wind line, a lot of times you can pick off some of those fish. So that was my first idea. Uh, and I saw a few fish rising as I was paddling over, just trying to stay out of the wind. It's not all that warm. Um, and it's going to get colder once the, the sun drops down, like I said, but it's warm enough. It's probably around 50 degrees. 50 degrees with sun and no wind feels pretty good. But for some reason, 49 degrees and wind uh, doesn't feel as good. But I'm in a, in a nice spot right now. I can take my hood down. I'm feeling pretty good. And I'm going to sort out something to try to present to those fish. And my first idea is a, uh, a float rig. And I've got a little piece of worm here. I got a little, it's called a, well, most of them are called bait pucks. This actually is a, a, a little circular fly box for dry flies that I got at a fly shop, I don't know how many years ago. And I use it like a bait puck. I think uh, that probably would hurt the feelings of some pure uh, fly guys. But um, anyway, that's how I use it, and it works great for taking, uh, you know, you could fit easily a dozen worms in there, and, and I rarely would go through that many. So I just put a little piece of trout worm on a little tungsten ice fishing jig. That's a BMC 132nd ounce Mongo jig. And the reason I fish that size Mostly is because it balances perfectly with the Thill Mini Shy Bite Float. That's a 3 and 1 8 Thill Mini Shy Bite Float. I'm not sure if they still make it, uh, but basically you want to find a float that balances well with a little tiny ice jig. And, and so when the fish pull on the ice jig to take the worm, they don't feel any resistance. If you fish a float with a lot of resistance, what happens is as soon as they feel, feel that resistance of a, of a big float, they spit the hook. I mean, and it happens in an instant, and they're really hard to hook uh, versus a float with a, just a little bit of resistance. It just slips under the water, and they really don't feel much at all. And it's much easier to hook them that way. They're still, I mean, it's only about two weeks or so after ice out, and they're, they're not... Um, super fired up. Same as the mill pond. This is a few days after the mill pond video. 
they're mostly interested in warming up versus eating up. But I'm going to get a few of them before that sun goes behind the trees. And I'll show you that in a sec. All right, here I am. I'm slowly making my way over towards that wind line. Really, any kind of edge is attractive to fish. And a wind line is just another kind of an edge. My, my main problem here, I sped up the footage because um, it didn't pan out, my first idea here. But um, the wind is shifting. And because the wind is shifting, my wind line is shifting. And, I'm, and as, as that's happening, the, uh, any flies or, or bugs that are hatching, they're going to move around too. And so will the fish. But it takes the fish a little while to, to locate the bugs again. So I'm sort of chasing a moving target. And the fish aren't keeping up with the movement of the wind and the movement of the bugs. And, you know, the wind is all over the place right now. And so I had to abandon this plan because it just it just wasn't working out. But I wanted to mention it because on on some trips, this is the deal. And a lot of people will just, you know, ignore it. It's not a pattern a lot of people fish. So another pattern that I like to fish in the spring is um, usually on the east or northeast side of the pond. This will be the southeast side of the pond, but there's a little, uh, I don't know, it's not really a point, but it's a little outcropping. And this is pretty much a, a round bowl of a pond. So any kind of little outcropping like this is going to be like a de facto point, a minor point because there's just not a lot of structure to it. It's pretty much all round. And as I'm casting towards the shore, I spooked a bunch of fish. And just like at the mill pond, they're mostly interested in warming up, not so much in eating yet. But since I found some fish shallow, there's going to be other areas where I can find fish that are more interested in eating than warming up. And I later found out that the best bite that I had was fish in the shade. And that's kind of counterintuitive this time of year. Uh, you, th you think that the active fish would be in the sun, uh, you know, warming up in the warmest water they can find. At least on this trip, that's not what I found. I found the most active fish, the ones that were willing to eat, were in the shade. And my guess is they're doing that so they can ambush their prey more easily. Maybe they already warmed up a little, a little bit, maybe a few hours in the sun, and then they made their way into the shade to feed. I'm guessing that, that the water in the shade, especially near shore, is at least a few degrees cooler. But maybe it doesn't matter to them once they've already warmed up. It's kind of strange, you know, sometimes in the spring uh, I find fish doing things that I don't expect them to do. And, um, and one of those things is, is hanging out in the shade. I mean, if, even if you just put, a, put some fish in a, in a bucket, like a, like a white plastic bucket, say they're minnows or something, a lot of times they'll go to the shady side of the bucket. If there's any kind of sun out, they'll, they'll, they'll all group up together in the shade, even in a bucket, a plain white bucket. So maybe that's what they're doing here. Even though I would guess the warmer water is right here, right on this minor point thing. But I couldn't get anything going on here until I made my way uh, into the shade. All right, I worked my way into the shady part of the pond. You can see that sun just starting to dip below the tree line there. This is usually a good time to uh, get some fish to bite. The water is also down about a foot. There was a, uh, a beaver dam across the stream that exits this, this pond. And either the, the flood waters ripped it open or um, some you know, man-made intervention uh, ripped apart the dam to keep somebody's house from flooding. 
Uh, but anyway, the, the dam, the beaver dam that goes across the pond has a great big hole in it and it, it dropped the water level at least a foot. You can see it a little bit against the uh, shoreline brush, that buck brush in there. But I managed to get a fish. That's a, a bluegill with a nice red belly and he's in the shade. I've got a fairly short uh, lead uh, underneath my float there that floats adjustable. I can just slide it up and down the line very easily and I'm casting it into probably a foot of water maybe a little bit more. I could even have that that lead a little bit shorter because I'm casting into pretty shallow water but if I make a good presentation to active fish it doesn't take long at all before you know they're they're on it and in this time of year really a lot of times of the year it's hard to beat a float in a little tiny tungsten jig it just suspends the the bait right in front of the fish and they have a long time to stare at it decide if they're going to eat it or not versus something like um, like a shad fries that's swimming that you you work by uh, just turning the handle and, and um, swimming that bait towards you they'll watch stuff like that go right by them in the spring and you can be casting into fish you know you know there, there's fish there because you just spook the whole school of them and they will watch those baits go right by them they just watch it it's, it's really frustrating but with a float you can um, you can adjust the, the lead underneath the, the float and just toss it right in there right where you think there's going to be a fish and let it hang there right in their face and then they have a choice are they going to eat it or just stare at it and after a while of just letting it sit there I'll reel it in and make another cast maybe there's no fish right where I cast but I'm pretty confident that along this shoreline in the shade I'm going to run into more fish. All right, got my uh, float out there. I'm watching the bobber. And you can actually, um, what I'm doing right there is I'm shaking the bobber. And, and what that does is it shakes the, the jig underneath the float. And if you, if you think there's going to be fish in the area, that's another technique that can get them to bite, you know, and turn those fish that are just staring at the jig into fish that are eating the jig. Now, he's not a giant fish, but the, the technique is the same. You actually shake the float to get the, the jig underneath the float to, to shake. Now, unfortunately, when that fish was uh, splashing around in my hand and, and uh, making a fuss, uh, he splashed the camera, and so there's going to be a little dot on the lens there until it dries that covers up the front part of my kayak but I'm just gonna let it roll my uh, my leads probably just a little bit too long I probably should shorten that up because I'm I'm catching stuff on the bottom of the the pond because I'm fishing in very shallow water so I didn't do that. I just made a different cast and uh, it ended up working out, but I really should probably shorten that distance up. That one's a little better. He's a little fuzzy because of the drop on the camera. That's all right. All right, let's make another cast here. When I'm casting the, the float in the jig, I'm not really whipping it too hard because if you do that it can tangle just making kind of an easy cast out there once I see some fish messing with the float I reel down tight to them and um, I'm not doing like the the Jimmy Houston uh, reel back and whack them hook set it's really just uh, reel setting them that little hook usually will penetrate pretty well it's a thin wire hook even on the Mongo jig, there's still little tiny hooks. 
Oh, I ended up dropping that one, but that's all right. I'll just catch another one. But it seemed like the, the more active fish were in the shade, tight to shore. It doesn't take too long. If you've got a, you've got something, you know, that's a reasonable presentation with a little bit of bait on there underneath the float. There he is. Oh, I dropped that one too. They're slippery little devils. All right, same thing. Nice easy cast with the float in the jig so they don't tangle. I'm watching that float. As soon as it goes down, I just reel set them. Nice and easy. If I was keeping fish, I'd probably use the net because um, when they're, this is the part where I usually lose them right there. Quick release. But that's good because it saves my hands from getting cold. Those those fish are still really cold to the touch, and the water's cold too. I know it looks like it's almost a summer day, but um, it's not that warm, <laughs> and the fish are uh, are just they're just cold. They feel like cold in ice cubes. All right, I got my float back in the same general area where I just caught that last fish. Let's see if I can get another one. Just letting that float soak a little bit. Watch the bobber go down. And then that time I did, did raise up the rod, but um, you can also just re reel set them. But I did it nice and easy. I'm not really swinging on them. And that way, if you miss them, you know, you didn't move the, the float six feet. You just moved it about a foot if you miss them. And then a lot of times they'll come back for it. All right, I left those uh, shade fish and I tried to sneak up on some of those fish that were basking in the sun and I managed to catch one of them, but they really weren't into it. They really just seemed to be um, just just trying to warm up in the sun there. And I, I knew I was around a bunch of fish because I could see them swirl out of the way every once in a while, but they just weren't nearly as aggressive as those shade fish. And I think it's because they were just trying to warm up. I mean, I was just in the middle of a bunch of fish in the shade, catching them pretty quickly, one after another. I know my presentation is good, and these fish just weren't having it. It's funny how they're like that sometimes. Now the, uh, the sun's dipped below the trees. We got both hoods up. Temperature's definitely dropping fast. And it's time for me to head back to the launch. The bite seemed to slow down too. See, I'm running through those fish that I was trying to cast at before. They weren't into it. it seemed like those shade fish were, were the ones that were eating. All right, I'm paddling towards the launch. Thank you all for watching. I'll list everything in the video description, just like all my other videos. And I'll catch you on the next one. See ya!